So everything is prepped and stacked and masked and ready to go. First step, mix some mud. I'm going to use this thing. I think I'm going to use this paddle. I think it goes in about like that. And so while there's still some shade on the slab, I'm going to get going. For me, there's a curious mix of feelings when I start into a construction project that's unfamiliar. There's an intensely focused attention because you're using up and you're committing expensive materials, and in this case, materials that my kids are paying for. There's kind of a gnawing insecurity because, you know, you don't have to be as old as I am to have figured out that sometimes you don't even know what you don't even know. And however badly the things that we don't know that are actually true can bite us, it's always the things that we know that we think are true but are not that really cause the problems. But mostly for me, there's a compelling and growing satisfaction. And it comes from just diving in and then piece by piece knocking out some work and doing something worthwhile and moving a project forward. I think that maybe this is the tradesman's most consistent compensation and the one that's easiest to overlook. But never forget it, guys. However good it feels, it won't feed your family. Well, the first day went okay. I mean, for a carpenter trying to lay block, it went okay. I got only 42 blocks in place, which is not much, but you know, I didn't work a long day. And as far as I can tell, and as far as I've always believed, the starter course is the hard one. You're working down on the ground and you know, just trying to get everything where it goes is a problem. I guess, even for a real mason, I know for a half-baked carpenter it's a problem. Having said all that, I got 42 blocks out of two bags of spec mix. I don't know if that's good or bad. I got um, the mistake of laying a half block in the wall, which I had to tear out. I did that because I didn't think through clearly the layout, and I started with a half block on one end, which should have been a full block, because a 36-foot long wall is an even 27 blocks. So when I got down towards the other end, I realized that I had to tear some stuff out. Let me give you a look at that. So here was the mental calculation. I was hot, I was tired, and I was disgusted because 
I've been looking forward to doing this now for months and I even practiced in my own shop, you know, laying up that block for that blast wall around the air storage vessel. And the first corner that I built right here, and then the second corner that I built right over there, built in a situation where when I got to the end it was going to be disappointing. So it brings to mind something that is true all the time, and that is you can do things that will work, that will be perfectly functional. And sometimes you just have to swallow hard and say, well, it's going to work and I am not going to think about that anymore and just keep pushing forward. But sometimes as you think about the long-term effect of leaving something in place that just isn't right, you realize that it is way less painful to eat the crow while it's warm. And so with these blocks torn out and what, maybe at my rate, 45 minutes to put them back in, I will always be happier when I come over to visit my kids that I took a minute to pull that half block out of the wall so that nobody would ever think, you know, why didn't that old man do that job right? So those of you who are watching me do this who are Masons, please feel free to school me in the comments. I'm sure the list of things that I am just doing completely backwards is uh, too long to put in a single comment, but you're welcome to try. But one of the things that I'm figuring out is that the critical piece in doing this is getting the consistency on your mud right. Now that's not all that insightful and it's not rocket science, but I kept running up against the, the, the uh, reality that if the mud's too stiff, you can't push the block far enough down on the starter course and the concrete sucking the moisture out of the mud that you put down there. So it's immediately harder and harder to where you just can't set it down. And if you get too much mud in the starter course, you have to displace more material to get the block where you want it. But if you don't have enough and if it's too loose and all of that, so I don't know what the rule of thumb is, but when I watch those Arizona masons slinging that mud, it looks so wet. And then I realize that 120 degrees on dry block, you've only got moments to get your block in place before the moisture is all gone. And so you have to start out with enough moisture. So if you've got a rule of thumb, if there's some way to think about the actual consistency of the mix, it would probably help me just in case I ever do this again, and it might help somebody else. So I don't know if I've talked about this much before. If I haven't, it's because I don't know much about it. But I learned from Larry Tompkins that about 40 inches of slaked lime or hydrated lime is a good thing to add to a bag of pre-mixed mortar. It makes the mortar stickier, it makes it adhere to your trowel a little and stick to the end of the block a lot better, which is something that a rookie like me is counting on. So before I put my dust mask on like a responsible citizen and mix this up, I'm going to take about this much, what is that, a cup and a half, two cups, I think that's about 40 ounces, and I'm just going to shake it onto this, put the lid back on it so it stays dry, mix it in dry before I mix it in wet. So one of the pearls of wisdom that I learned from Sam Ball, Kelly's granddad, a long time ago, was that when you're mixing mud and it gets close to the right consistency, you can spit in it and it will be too wet. Let's see how we did. All right, the first mud of the day is mixed. This will take me, I don't know, maybe, maybe 20 blocks, we'll see. That should get me to the point where I'm ready to put the rebar into the bond beam. We'll see how that works out. But let me just say this right now. I could get used to this column mix thing. I mean, for a job this size, you know, as I learn to do this a little better, I can see that this might be just exactly the right tool for something like this. got a new day. It's a new week. I'm going to start a new course. I laid up the leads at the, on the corners of this thing Friday when I shut this off. I'm going incredibly slowly, but I'm having a good time working here with Ben. I'm learning a lot about just how hard masonry is and the necessity of making your mud wet enough that it'll actually run. 
I'm beginning to get a little tiny bit of facility and so things are going better besides the fact that I don't have to bend over near so far now that the block are up somewhere near waist high. Boy, I'm glad I don't have to do this all day, every day. I have the bonus again today of working with my son-in-law and I've got him pushed over there onto a little bit of electrical remedial work. He is an electrical guy after all. And so while he's sort of extending some conduit, you know, for bringing the power out into the building, I'll mix some mud and we'll get busy setting some block with any luck at all. So I've been experimenting with getting, you know, about the right amount of mud on the trowel. I don't know if that's right or not. But what happened yesterday is I discovered that if I turn the trowel up vertically before I begin to swipe down the edge of the block, kind of like that, it goes better. Before I've been putting it up there kind of horizontal and having it at a 45 degree angle, and it just never went too good. And then the other side, I have no idea really if this is how they do it or not, but if I can see, it didn't work. See if I do better. A little better. It seems to be that the angle at which you start your swipe is really important. I have two bond beams in this little short wall. That's about a third more than you need. Typically about two feet on center vertically is sort of ordinarily plenty, but I've got it at 16 inches on center. I've got one 16 inches up and one 32 inches up. A bond beam is this cut out portion of the block so you can lay a piece of rebar in here longitudinally down the length of the wall to give it resistance to, you know, bending. The vertical rebars give it resistance to overturning, and so between the overturning strength and the bending strength, walls can resist some loads. This is gonna be backfilled up to about here, so this is gonna be stronger than perhaps it needs to be. It's the last block. I'm glad to see it. I've learned a lot, and I've learned, as if I didn't already know it, that I'm not a mason. But it's okay because the blocks are in place and they're gonna look good when the building's standing on them and they're square and they're reasonably straight. And that, after all, is what they have to be in order to move forward. So I'm going to cut out a few of the webs on the top because some of the blocks at the ends were not bonds. I'm going to try to protect myself from the silica. I'm going to put a top course of number four bar in here and drop a few verts in because I stopped the verts anticipating three courses high and then decided to go four courses high. We'll take care of all of that, get an inspection, and grout this wall solid. There's two things left. I've got to cut a bunch of verts to drop in here to extend up into the top course. I showed you that already. I've got to get four of these 16 inch 5 8 diameter stab bolts for HD5 hold downs hung in brackets kind of like this that'll be in place when the inspector gets here. One, two, three, four. Once that's taken care of, we will get this thing signed off and figure out whether we're going to pump the block fill in or wheelbarrow it in and make my grandkids get a little bit of uh, concrete on it. Just between you and me, I think that's probably how it's gonna end up. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work.